Hi there, you're watching Market Cafe on ET Now with me, Shriyansi Singh, and with me, Snehi Shah. Over the next one hour, we'll take you through news and updates from within the country as well as across the globe, tell you which stocks you should keep on your radar and tell you what the brokerages are saying as well. So let's get started. First things first, it was a good day and a week coming in for Nasdaq at least, right? Well, absolutely. US markets on an overall did very well. But uh, yes, Nasdaq was the one to watch out for. Good morning. Let's kickstart the show then with the global handover. The Nasdaq closed Friday at fresh record highs as gain in chipmaker NVIDIA outweighed worries that the Fed Reserve will delay any interest rate cuts. The S&P 500 rose 7 tenths of a percent. Nasdaq advanced 1.1 percent, the real winner in last week's trading session, ending at 16,921 thereabouts. The Dow edged up 4.3 points, which was rather flat move coming in, but managed to close in the green nonetheless. Now, for the week that went by, though, however, we had some mixed moves coming in across Wall Street. S&P 500 inched up just, um, you know, less than one tenth of a percent, so very flat moves coming over there. Nasdaq outperformed its uh, peer indices with a gain of 1.4 percent. Meanwhile, on the flip side, you had the Dow that shed 2.3 percent, marking its first negative week in the last five weeks. Now, Nvidia well was the stock to talk about because Nvidia shares climbed around 2.6 percent on Friday as enthusiasm continued over its blockbuster earnings report, pushed uh, pushing the shares above that one. $1,000 per share for the first time. Now, traders are now pricing in less than a 50% chance that the central bank will cut rates at its September meeting. This is according to the CME Fed watch tool. And several tech names were higher on Friday. Advanced micro devices did well. Intel rose 3 uh, 2.1% and uh, Meta and Netflix shares also rallied 2.7% and 1.7% each. So now this performance helped Nasdaq log its 11th record close of the year. And uh, the bullish sentiment on the AI giant and other tech names powered the market higher even as concerns that the Fed will not lower rates this summer lingered. Now, after several strong economic and labor data releases this week, Goldman pushed its forecast for the Fed's first rate cut back to September from July. So that's the lowdown on the US market. Um, Nasdaq shining uh, to be the real winner and uh, on the back of Nvidia shares, that is the winner. Um, switch tabs and look at what European markets are doing. Well, it's um, not much happening across Europe because DAX is as flat as ever. FTSE is down almost three tenths of a percent and then the stock 600 index is also down two tenths of a percent for Friday. So not much, um, you know, not much happening when it comes to the European markets. But uh, Shayan, we're seeing some price uh, spike happening in oil, isn't it? Absolutely. And before I come to that, I'm going to take a quick look at gold prices as well because gold prices rose as the dollar slip but were headed still for their worst week in five and a half months. That is the kind of move that we've seen come in for gold prices then. And this is, of course, as hopes of interest rate cuts by the US Central Bank team. Now, when you look at Bullion's story that we saw play out last week, Bullion hit a record high of uh, 2,449. And that was on Monday, but after that, it has shed about $100 since then and is on track for a 3% drop uh, that particular week. It's worst weekly dip since early December coming in for gold as well. Now, when you look at crude oil then, crude oil futures bounced back from three-month lows on Friday, but still booked uh, to a loss for the week as the summer really uh, driving season gets underway with the Memorial Day holiday as well. So when you look at US crude oil, hit an intraday low of $76 thereabout in morning trading, the lowest level since Feb 26th as well. And global benchmark Brent fell to $80 thereabout, the lowest level since Feb 8 as well. Now the two benchmarks turned positive later in the session but settled at a weekly loss of 2.9% and 2.2% respectively when you look at price moves then. $77 is where WTI was at, up about 1.1% uh, and year to date also the US oil is up 8.4%. Now when you look at Brent then, that one was around $82 a barrel, up 76 cents or almost a percent and year to date also the global benchmark is up 6.5%. Now OPEC and its allies led by Russia will hold a virtual meeting on June 2nd to review production policy. And a coalition of OPEC Plus members is voluntarily holding 2.2 million barrels per day off the market to support prices. So that largely is the story that we're seeing play out for oil prices. But let's stay. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.